Hey folks, right, this video has been a lot longer in the pipelines than I wanted it to be, but it's finally here and the delay has been due to textures. I got into this a little while ago and I'd, had, I'd underestimated massively how complicated uh, textures were going to be to support, mainly due to image formats, which got me into a world of pain. Um, it's fine if you just limit yourself to a few types on both sides, but being a rapper I wanted to support everything properly and while I still, I've left out a few things for now, like I'm, compressed textures, mainly out of laziness. Um, everything is now working as I want it to and the um, the kind of interface is pleasant and a lot of things can be inferred just from the standard types. So what I'm going to do rather than wittering on is I'm going to run the demo and we will write a little code Oops. That's what I was doing earlier. to show what can be done with textures. So, the demo is running, and we'll do a whistle-stop tour up here. This is the Lisp data, a vector 4 and a vector 2. This is a GL struct. GL structs work for foreign data and for GPU data, so you can use these in your shaders, um, which just unifies things and makes everything feel a little more pleasant. Uh, what we do is when the demo starts, we create a GPU array um, for six vertices with this type, uh, pulling in the data from Quad, which is this up here. That creates an array on the GPU and uploads everything, that's done. And then we create a stream. A stream is what you pass to the pipeline to actually do the rendering. Um, and this bit's up here, so we call Prog1, which is the pipeline, with the stream. And it's just a, fra a vertex shader and a fragment shader, uh, both one line. One passes through the position and the other just sets the color to be blue. So, let's add some textures. What we're going to do is we're going to create a random um, one color texture and get going from there. So, let's store. Oops, all over the place today. Text array. Right, we're, I'm creating these just to store our um, foreign array and the actual texture itself. So, let's call this one texture. this. Okay, so let's make our C array first. So make C array. And this is going to be an array. The texture size is going to be 64 by 64. We're only sending up one color, so let's just send an unsigned byte, because there's no reason to send a whole vector of colors if we're only using one. Um, we need an initial contents, and this initial contents is going to be set by a loop. So if we can just pass in a list, if it's in the right structure, the data will be destructured into the array automatically. Like what happened with quad um, over here. We had it laid out vector 4, vector 2, which is the layout of this data type, so it just destructured it in for us. Okay, back over here. Loop 4, x below 64. And then collect another loop. Loop for y below 64, collect, and now we need a random value um, that will fit in a byte. So 254, done. We need to keep this, so let's store this in text array, because that's what it was for. And we'll take the last value from the REPL, store it in text array. Now we need to create the texture. And as you can see when I do make texture, if you look down the bottom of the screen where the hints are, there are a lot of arguments. Textures are complicated beasts. People often think of them just as images, but they're not. Um, textures are structures that hold images. They can have mipmap layers, and then uh, they can be arrays of textures. They can be cube array mipmap textures. They, there's a lot to them, but ultimately they are structures that store images. And I've been mentioned, as has been mentioned in a lot of tutorials, images is a terrible name as well because image applies that it's got one use, but it's not. These are 1D, 2D, or 3D arrays of typed data. So you really can do a lot with these. Don't limit yourself to just storing pictures in them um, because you can do tons with textures. So we could specify all these details, but I'd rather just tell it to take the text array and infer everything it needs from there. Because it knows it's an unsigned byte and it's known just 64 4 by 64 so we can find out the rest for itself. So if you do that, you've got your texture. Let's save this again. 
done. Right, now we've got our texture, we've got to use it. So we're going to have to modify our pipeline up here to actually use them. Now textures are uniform values. They're available to all the stages of the pipeline. So we're going to call it text. This is just like keyword arguments. So it's text and the type is sampler 2D. This is one detail I haven't made nice yet. Um, you have to know the sampler type for your texture type. And you can see it's a GL Texture 2D down here, so you do use a sampler 2D. Um, I will have this either be inferred or have a really simple way to get the sampler type you need to use in future. If I compile this now, it's going to complain that I'm not passing in a texture. Um, that's a limitation I've got on it. For now, it's something I'll fix in the future. So if I compile this, there we go. Uniform textures must be, texture uniforms must be supplied. So let's do that. Let's text because it's like a keyword argument. And then we pass in the texture. Now we say continue and our program should run just fine. Brilliant. Now we've got our pipelines running. All of our shaders are going fine, but it's not using any of this texture data. So the first thing we need to do is have the texture coordinates that we defined up here available in the fragment shader, which means all, all that vertex data gets passed in, into the vertex shader, and then it has to pass along what it likes to the next stage. And we do this by setting an out variable. So we use the out function, and then we give a name. So this is what's going to be available in the next one. It's going to be called text call. We're going to smoothly interpolate it, and it's just going to be the data that's in the vertex that's being passed in. So let's have a look. It will be text boss of vert. Compiled. That's all running fine, so we can carry on. Now we've got this data there. Let's sample it. So the command for pulling out the pixel color is called texture in GSL. This is another thing that I want to go back and write a nice interface over the top. There are a lot of different commands for getting a pixel out of a texture at a given level of detail and array layer and blah. There's too many options and there will be a way to whittle this down to something pleasant. So this is subject to change. We're going to take out of text and we're going to use text chord. And there you go, there's our texture. Fantastic. So that really was just a few lines of code. Create the data, throw it into a texture, display. We can mess around with this though. I mean, that's, that's one of the things um, I was fiddling around with before, but let's see what we can just come up with now. It'd be nice to do something based on the distance from the center, maybe make some kind of ripple. So we'll just do this very quickly. Uh, what are we going to need? We're going to need a distance. So we'll do a dist is going to be the dot product and we'll just, if we take text chord and dot product with itself, then you get a distance squared. Um, now, magni for magnitude and we'll take sine of the distance and then, oops, and what we're going to do, we're going to add it to this color down here. So this is going to be a vector 4. These textures, ultimately, when they're sampled, become vector 4s, um, except for a few cases. So we're going to add on a vec4 with 0, magni, 0, 0. Oh, didn't like that. What haven't I done? Ah, of course, this is just straight let. We need to do a let star if we're going to use it in the subsequent forms. Say continue. Hey, okay. But that's quite large. We want more repeats than that. So let's times this by 50. Whoa, nice. Okay, right. Now it's coming from one corner. I want it to be in the middle. Um, so let's... What we really need is the offset from the middle. So it's going to be the text chord... Um, minus, let's minus um, another vector. So we're going to do vec2, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Oh yeah, we've got to use it. 
Um, so rather than text chord, we're going to have offset. Offset. Cool. If these all right, what does Satie look like? Ah, not bad. Okay, right. I really want this animated. So now we've got our ripple. Let's make it an animated ripple. So if we def parameter, we'll do the same as we did in one of the other demos. Just make it called count. We should put the EMF song because that's what you're meant to do. 0.8. Compile that. Let's go down to step demo and we'll increment it. Um, oops. Count by 0.01. Um, and that's now happening every frame. And we need to pass this in. So we'll create a new uniform called count, which will be a float. That's compiled. And then we need to actually pass the value in. So count. Oops, I'm working on other things clearly. Here's count. If you can spell count, it's not any of those letters. Okay, the count value is now in and it should be steadily increasing. If we look down here, count is climbing all the time. So let's just do something very simple. We will. Um, Add it to dist. How about that? Ugh, too fast. Okay, there we go. That's a very simple demo. I'm not going to go into any more just now, but I'll probably stick up some more videos of messing around with fragment shaders soon. Radio folks, take care.